Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Abrik. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of building on the tangible achievements made through the cooperative relationship between the executive and legislative branches. He noted the efforts of Team Bahrain, which have directly supported the kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King, reiterating that citizens will continue to remain at the heart of all development initiatives. For his part, the Shura Council Chairman expresses appreciation to His Royal Highness for his support to further advance cooperation between the executive and legislative branches. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, BCCI Samir Nas, at Trafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of increasing the contribution of the private sector towards the Kingdom's development goals led by His Majesty the King and ensuring it remains the primary engine of growth. Meanwhile, the Chairman of the BCCI expressed his appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment towards maximizing the role of the private sector in the Kingdom. Also present at the meeting was the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzia Zainal, shared the Council's weekly meeting. She congratulated His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister on the anniversary of the BDF, which falls on the 5th of February. On the occasion, the Arab Women's Day, Zainal expressed pride and appreciation of the achievements made by women in all fields. The Council then approved the following. A draft law allocating 50% of the investment island costs as public costs. A draft ratifying the air services agreement between the governments of Bahrain and Italy. A proposal granting or renewing residence permits for foreigners if born to a Bahraini mother's. A proposal granting child allowance for every Bahraini head of family provided that the number of children covered by the subsidy does not exceed four and a proposal concerning the procurement of the cost of establishing and developing infrastructure in construction areas which aims to exempt the projects in which the Bahraini property owner demolishes and rebuilds his property designated for housing purposes for him or his first degree relatives. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi Ibn Abdullah Zainal, held a virtual meeting with the Speaker of the House of Commons of the United Kingdom, Sir Lindsay Hall. In the presence of Bahrain Ambassador to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Daniel praised the deep-rooted historical relations between both countries and strategic cooperation in various fields. She stressed the keenness of Bahrain to boost bilateral cooperation in light of the Comprehensive Development March, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. She also underlined the importance of parliamentary coordination to support development efforts and promote security and stability. She also pointed out the significance of existing cooperation between between the Representatives Council and a number of British centres. For his part, Sir Lindsay Hoyle praised Bahrain's achievements in various fields and in empowering women politically, stressing the need to continue bolstering communication between the two friendly countries at all levels. He also commended cooperation between both countries in fostering peace and security in the region and the world.
The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, held a video call with the Israeli Minister of Public Security, Amir Ohana. They hailed the agreement, declaring support for peace between the two countries, which will enhance security, stability, progress, and meeting the needs of people of the region. The Minister of Interior affirmed that the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa emphasizes the values of coexistence, tolerance, and openness as one of the most important features of the authentic. Bahraini identity, adding that Bahrain remains a country of peace and safety. The two sides discuss security cooperation between the two countries and the exchange of expertise and affirmed the importance of developing relations to serve common interests. They also discussed a number of affairs of common interests. The Girl Guides of Bahrain held an annual camping event held remotely under the slogan Girl Guides of Bahrain, Belonging, Loyalty, Volunteering and Achievement, with the participation of 400 students. The Minister of Education and Chairman of the Bahrain Girl Guides Association, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, attended some of the activities where he delivered a speech in which he highlighted the prominent role of scouts and guides in the development of the values of commitment and community service among young people. And Naimi said that Bahrain plays pays attention to various age groups of students by training them to serve their community. The program includes a series of training workshops. Under the patronage of His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, signed an agreement to establish the Kingdom of Bahrain Center for Plant Research and Sciences at the University of Khartoum. The agreement was signed by the RHF Secretary General Dr. Mustafa Sayyid and Sudan's Finance and Economic Planning Minister Dr. Hiba Mohammed Ali. For more on how the center will be established, we are joined now by the RHF Secretary General Dr. Dr. Mustafa Sayyid. Welcome to the news, Dr. Mustafa. Hi, good evening. Thank Dr. you for inviting me. Doctor, can you tell us more about this agreement and how Bahrain always seeks to invest in sustainable initiatives? This comes as part of His Majesty's initiatives to help uh, countries who are facing difficulties. As you remember, there was a big flood that affected most parts of uh, Sudan. And as directed by His Majesty the King, we went there, inspected the area, uh, provided uh, rescue and uh, medical support. Uh, there were two plane loads. We discussed from people, from the president of the country, the minister of social affairs, minister of health, uh, all the uh, senior people, and uh, we followed up our humanitarian visit with another uh, group to assess what else can we do. Bahrain's initiatives are successful. It has the support of His Majesty the King and the direction of His Highness uh, Sheikh Nasser. So we discussed, and we give them the choice. We said we can build a school, we can uh, provide medical center, or anything else, or water wells. They suggested we build a center for research into uh, plants, herbs, uh, uh, agricultural research center. Yes, yes, that's amazing. We, uh, we, doctor, we, I, I don't want to cut you, off, cut you off, but at this point, the RHF has exerted also tremendous efforts to support Sudan, as you said, especially after the floods of last year. Adding to that, how can the center add to Bahrain's humanitarian work there? This will not add only, it's, it's a brilliant idea. Uh, uh, I don't take credit, don't, I don't take credit for it. But Sudan is the food basket of the Arab world. Mm. And establishing a center that improves the quality uh, and the systems agriculture is of tremendous 
strategic benefit to the Arab world. And it is fantastic that a, a small country like Bahrain uh, uses its resources creatively to give support. This is a tremendous idea. Honestly, it, uh, its support is unbelievable. Yesterday, the Minister of Finance was over the moon, and she said, we will make sure by September it is, it is ready and going. The location is uh, in, in, the, in the yard, a big, big, big section of the uh, Khartoum University, mm-hmm. overlooking the Nile in a strategic area in uh, Khartoum, in the, in the capital. It's enough that that building will carry the flag of Bahrain. It will be a, a wonderful moment of friendship between two countries. And there is a special fondness between uh, our king and the president of Sudan, uh, Burhan, I, uh, His Highness Burhan. I met him there, and he spoke so passionately about his relation from train, military training times uh, years ago and how they uh, bonded this relation and how this has transformed into some practical cooperation. Yeah. This will be of sig- major strategic significance. And the Sudanese are aware of that. That's why they want to make sure that it goes uh, very well, its construction and its work, because I'm sure that there will be further, further cooperation. Uh, j- just a thought now. Uh, very, it's very possible that Bahrainis go and work in that center, train is very possible yeah. that Sudan will offer scholarships in uh, Khartoum University for for Bahrainis so the the the, the, the scope uh, even in terms of monetary value not that big in terms of building relation it's very significant and there is a big potential as long as this uh, a great respectful relation is on, a lot can be developed. And yesterday, the, uh, the senior minister of finance left the Royal Charity uh, Foundation offices over the moon with joy with what she saw. Uh, if you allow me, you know, half a minute, we even discuss exporting the technology of charity and humanitarian work, the system that RCO uses, to Sudan. We did it successfully in uh, Egypt, and they are saving billions of Egyptian pounds for uh, poor people. The system is working, same as ours is. So that's another area of cooperation that we are looking into. That's amazing. I mean, especially with the exchange of uh, expertise and the exchange of these resources, it always puts Bahrain at the forefront of humanitarian work such as this. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Mustafa Sayed. The general command of the BDF continues to receive civilians to join the reserve force for relatives of workers in the BDF and the National Guard. The volunteers have set an example of Bahraini loyalty and patriotism by fulfilling their national duty to defend the stability and security of their homeland. With the preparations for the launch of the first training phase for citizens participating in the reserve force, the volunteers express joy and eagerness to join the BDF since the announcement via various media outlets given the importance of the reserve force. The volunteers have called on the citizens of Bahrain to join the reserve force, which reflects their keenness on fulfilling their national duty to bolster the security and stability of the kingdom.
The Bahrain Association of Bank, BAB, organized a remote meeting that included representatives of the General Director of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security at the Ministry of Interior, the Telecommunications Regulatory Authority, the TRA, and several members of the Association of Banks and Financial Institutions, during which they discussed bank fraud through contacting customers using a false identity or sending malicious links to steal customers' data and money. For more about this meeting, which comes as part of an awareness campaign initiated by Bob, we are joined on the phone by Abdel Wahid Al Janahi, Chief Executive of the Benefit Company and member of the Bahrain Association of Bank. Welcome to the news. Mr. Thank Janahi. you. Thank you for being thank with you, us. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Can you please tell us about the Bob Awareness Campaign? Sure. Um, Bob is uh, currently in coordination you know, with both Bahrain and UN TV in both languages, English and Arabic, broadcast uh, short educational messages throughout the day to the public to educate them about the proper procedures in dealing with their bank account and responding to an anonymous code requesting information about their bank account. So Bob currently is coordinating in fact with the director of um, financial and electronic crimes, the Central Bank of Bahrain, as well as the uh, Telecom Regulatory Authority. Um, it's all our partners, you know, in order to, to launch a comprehensive awareness campaign with the participation of all the, to the public. Uh, also, the association uh, coordinates and works with the aforementioned parties you know, to research you know, how to confront calls for messages sent by uh, pirates, for example, will case uh, to the clients and address their problems. Uh, meanwhile, there's always the coordination between Bob and the bank, and the Bob always requesting the bank to active their communication with their uh, uh, clients to warning them, you know, from such uh, calls and, and messages. Uh, see, the problem that we are facing uh, today is not new, and it is uh, a form of using the information gathered from the customer themselves over the phone you know, to activate uh, their mobile wallet. And then the suspicious caller, what we will do the moment he gets all these confidential information, he will start transferring the funds to his account and say the money is lost outside Bahrain. And another trick is by using uh, messages with a link asking for details. So this is usually followed by a call. That's what we notice. And so many people, they notice this. You know, where the suspicious callers get the uh, the one time pass you know, from the customer. So, so the so the suspicious caller will not be able, in any chance, to get the information or to get, uh, 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 sorry, to get the funds, okay, without getting the uh, the information. So basically, this is uh, you know um, a very brief and uh, what Bob doing in coordination with the relative party. Right. Right. Um, that's from the corporate point of view, uh, Mr. Al Janahi. Now, from 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 your side, I mean, as a man uh, in your position, heading one of the most successful um, online financing companies, what is your advice to the consumers or the customers to deal with these kind of matters? Yeah, yeah, this is very important. In fact, um, we've been doing this for some time now in coordination uh, with the parties I mentioned earlier. Um, but the bank customers must not answer any calls, you know, from strange numbers or especially from outside Bahrain, even even from inside Bahrain, because the fraudsters and pirates, you know, they have a means and ways you know, to divert the international calls to local numbers. So in the event that any of these calls, and let's say uh, for any reason, are answered, then no information should be given about their bank account. In the bank, the uh, sort of bank. Do not ask their clients about any confidential information about their account, uh, whether it's through the phone calls or, or messages. So, any, uh, so my, my advice and my suggestion is always, uh, and we keep telling the customer uh, almost, um, I would say, uh, I wouldn't say on a daily basis, but from time to time, that any suspicious calls must be reported to the directorate of so uh, financial and electronic. You know, they have a number, which is uh, 992. So if uh, the person became a victim, then he, he or she can call 992, okay? And get also to call 
uh, his or his, uh, or his bank, you know, to stop or hold their account and call. Uh, you know, they must report to us at the number to 902 so they can, you know, follow up uh, and, and they take their action. So uh, it's something that's very important. Even word of mouth is very important, by the way. We always say that, you know, the people, they should be the other people who are around them uh, and the people who are near them about this kind of uh, uh, cause. So the rule, uh, if I may summarize it, Sarah, the rule is that the bank or the benefit company, for example, never call or send SMS matches, uh, messages requesting the customer to disclose any confidential information, you know, related to the bank's account or debit card or credit card. This type of information you know, should never be shared by anybody or disclosed to anyone. You know, these are your information. It's the private and strictly confidential, and it should remain with the person, you know, him or, uh, or herself. Yeah. And That's okay. amazing. So for people to stay vigilant, they have to follow also um, the awareness aspects of all of these things that are available on all kinds of outlets and especially on benefit and other things. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Abdul Wahid Al Janahi. The Ministry of Health has called for a strong emphasis on the power of social responsibility in reducing the impact of COVID-19 and protecting individuals and communities by adhering fully to the instructions provided by the competent authorities, deploring the saddening increase in the number of cases despite the tremendous efforts exerted to confront the virus. The Ministry urges the community to exercise greater commitment to the precautionary measures for the sake of the people and the nation. The official endeavor to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 and reduce its impact are moving ahead and they should be supported by the community through applying a greater commitment to the rules in the national fight against the virus. These include confining family gatherings to the members living in the same home and limiting social interaction and compliance with instructions issued by the National Medical Task Force. The ministry cautioned that the spike in the number of cases is a serious threat to the health of society and urgent urged all individuals to act responsibly by committing themselves to the precautionary measures and to contribute positively to Bahrain's health security. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that the total number of individuals who have taken the vaccine has reached 172,912. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 4,206 with 401 recoveries and 525 registered new cases. 240 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 280 are contacts of active cases and 5 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.